Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Since I've been running Deepin, I've received a lot of questions about the security of the distro and also a lot about how well it stands up to the Manjaro Deepin community release. It was over a year ago that I did a video about the two side by side, but those have been done in a virtual box. Today I want to compare and contrast this question to see if one of these is better or if it is just a matter of preference. Before we start, I received a long and poignant comment about the problems in Linux. The point that got to me was the issue where we often do not know where the distro ends and the desktop begins. So what really is the difference there? Well, the desktop environment is what we see as a typical user. What file managers? How is the desktop set up? Where are the panels, the docs, the menus? Also, installation of software is often, but not always, determined by the desktop environment. The distro, to contrast, is what software is available, what versions of those packages you can install, and what means you use to install them. App, Pac-Man, Panic, that is really the realm of this distro. Taken together, we will look at how two distros interpret the same desktop environment. As we dive into this question, we will point out that we may expect a better implementation from the Deepin distro for the mere reason they have developed the entire desktop for that purpose. Manjaro Budgie is good, but Solace developed Budgie, so we would expect a smoother implementation. Same with Cinnamon on Linux Mint. The next big thing we will address is the core distro itself. Deepin was based on Ubuntu, but has since changed to Deepin Unstable, meaning it will generally have very up-to-date packages and use apt in the terminal for applications, unless you want to use the Deepin Software Center. Manjaro, on the other hand, is Arch-based, features the PAMIC package manager, and also includes the Arch user repository. The software will likely be more bleeding edge than even the Debian Unstable, as Arch has the reputation for pushing out the very latest packages. Of course, Manjaro holds back packages for a short period of time just to make sure they will not impact the performance of the system. With those differences in mind, let's see how these two operating systems line up with each other. My Deepin experience was pretty good. The installation was a little weird, and I had to run it a few times, so it was not very intuitive. I was trying to run the OS on the whole one terabyte external drive, but it ended up with a disk with a lot of fragmentation which even included free space. EFI swap root file system and free space to be exact. Oh well, I did not need a lot of space anyway, so I ran with it. The applications were easy to install and the Deepin store was one of the best software centers I've ever seen. I was able to find all my software, but I noticed a few packages installed by default I wanted to remove. Google Chrome and WPS Office were installed and I do not agree with either of their end user license agreements so I tried to uninstall them in the Deepin store, but they did not get removed from the system right away. Eventually they were purged and I was off with the software I needed. I was able to get my mobile home folder transferred, so I was able to get my settings, particularly for Firefox, but I found a bug that I was not able to save any bookmarks. I tried the menu, the star button, control D, hotkey, no avail. I gave up on that one. It actually turns out, though, that it was simply a problem with the profile on Firefox. I exported the bookmarks, rebuilt the profile, imported the bookmarks, and reinstalled the passwords. No problem at all. That wasn't a problem with Deepin. It's just somewhere around the line my Firefox profile got messed up. My email came through perfectly in Thunderbird, and I assume Evolution, but just in case, paranoia prevented me from actually entering my passwords to Evolution for the entire time I ran the desktop. Once the software was installed, I took some time to get the system the way I like it. The good part of the Deepin desktop environment is the ability to customize a dock mode for Mac appearance or the efficient mode for a Windows-like appearance. The menu can also be set up as a dash view on the Mac or a start menu style on Windows. Well, except for that Windows 8 monstrosity. The desktop is beautiful, clean, and just a touch of translucency to make it shine. The settings panel resembles the old budgie raven menu, but this one is retained on all the sidebar. It is refreshing at first to see it, but it becomes confusing and encumbering rather quickly. 
It is small, stuck to the side, and contains several nests, making it difficult to see where you are. Furthermore, if you need to get back to the home part of the menu to move over to the weather and notifications, Oh yes, notifications. Did I mention that they are initially very nice and refreshing? But they do not stay that way. There's no way to disable notifications, but you can toggle off the sounds. It is a workaround, but not the most ideal situation. By the way, the notification sounds play even if the application has its own notification, and that means it plays twice. On Thunderbird, for example, the sound plays twice, and it is about two seconds long. You get the Thunderbird notification, which is a system default, and you get the system notification for every single email. It gets really annoying. Other applications, like Skype, which have their own notification sound, plays both the Skype notification overlaid with the system notification. That also gets rather annoying. Speaking of annoyances, there are two more I can recall. One is any time I want to open a raw text file, in most distros, opening that file, it will simply open. But on Deepin, I need to select between Cancel, Run, Run in Terminal, or Display. For such an otherwise user-friendly distro, that could be confusing to a newbie. The other minor annoyance is if you have other hard drives plugged into your computer and you open the file manager, you are greeted with a scary-looking warning dialog about not being able to mount some partitions. This does appear to be limited to the Windows partition. It gives the options to reboot or cancel. That would also trip someone up. The only other negative or annoyance is the inability to select normal desktop icons. Most of them can be added by finding them in the menu, right-clicking, and sending to desktop. But network, mounted drives, both of which I regularly use myself, are not options. So making a desktop icon to those will take some more research. With those annoyances aside, my overall experience on Deepin was rather positive. There were a few little annoying things I pointed out here, but for the most part, it was stable, did its job, and was not intrusive in my life. I can say I really like it. Of course, I am talking about the desktop environment, not specifically the distro, but I'm still curious what will be the same and what will be different if I run Manjaro with this desktop environment. So let's have a look. Manjaro gave me a better install experience. Rather than having to use only half of my hard disk, I was able to install the user partition to the entire remaining disk after the boot partition was used. I also did not experience the same error I had occurred where I needed to install the operating system a few times just to get it to stick. This was the best part about Manjaro Deepin. Once the OS was ready to boot for the first time, I was greeted with a standard old Linux boot screen, lines of code, system status, journal clearing, etc. All those things look cool and geeky, just fine for me as a seasoned Linux user, but not quite as flashy or as beautiful as the flash screen I encountered on Deepin OS. Now on the desktop, it was time to have a look at how the two operating systems would differ. In the home folder, Manjaro has a properly translated templates folder, but that folder still does not function as it should a limitation of this desktop environment. The software was also better on Manjaro. We had more privacy-focused software on the install, Firefox in place of Chrome and LibreOffice in place of WPS Office. Most of the system utilities are the same, except of course for that software installer. Deepin OS has the beautiful and functional Deepin software store, while Manjaro has the familiar, highly functional, but not as nice, Pamuk for installation. And my apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Of course, this is shared among all the Manjaro builds I have looked at. Not a complaint, but nothing to write home about either. Now it was time to set up my desktop. Both distros had a variety of pre-installed wallpapers, but only Manjaro had images reflecting the name, which I like to use on my test systems so viewers know which computer build I'm using. Everything, including themes and icons, were the same. So I effectively set up my Deepin build on Manjaro the same way I set up the Deepin OS, but with a different wallpaper, of course. I found everything else the same. The software and Arch user repository gave me a few applications I needed that were not in the repo. Namely Skype, 
but I also installed Spotify just to test how my Christian podcasts turned out on the platform. Everything was essentially the same. As for the user experience, both Manjaro and Deepin OS function nearly the same. What was annoying on Deepin OS continued to be a pain on Manjaro. The great aspects were still great, but one area I did notice. On Deepin OS, the media played smooth whether I was streaming YouTube video or watching something on view.yahoo.com, where you can get ad-supported free Hulu programs. I also noticed the same smooth behavior watching DVDs on VLC or downloaded video and audio files on Kodi. This is where Deepin outshined because Manjaro, I was back to the occasional stutter of video. About every five minutes or so, the video on any platform would hiccup. Not a big deal, but certainly noticeable for the PC that serves the basic task of playing media while I work. I have noticed this before on other distros, and it truly is minor, but I did not experience such a thing on Solace, Deepin, or Elementary OS. This was the only place I noticed any obvious change. As for software, Deepin OS being based on Debian testing rolls, but not quite as fast as Manjaro, for those always wanting the latest software, Manjaro would be slightly better in this regard, but I'm fairly indifferent on this point myself. So which distro has the best implementation of Deepin desktop environment? Drumroll, please. I declare that Deepin OS comes out in the head. Though, not by much. What was the deciding factor? It came down to the fine details. While both worked essentially the same, Deepin did handle media files better than Manjaro. That was really the only functional difference. But on to the design, Deepin pays more attention to the finer points of the OS. The splash screen hides the code that a new user may not be familiar with, while an older user may see as boring and non-essential. It was nice to see that little detail. Also, the software on Deepin is installed on a much better, cleaner, and more elegant installer. The images, descriptions, search, and sort all make the experience wonderful, particularly for a new user. Not to mention some of those other applications like Skype and Spotify are in the repository, so you do not need to worry about the questionable sources of the AUR. Sure, some of these may be tiny things, and it may not sway someone in one direction or the other, but a lot of people have asked me my opinion which of these builds of deep and out desktop environment were better. So my choice, outside of any other consideration, is Deepin OS. Have you used either of these or both of these distros with a Deepin desktop? What were your thoughts? Did I choose accurately and what did I miss? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to check out the links in the description below to learn how you can help support this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.